Hi guys, welcome back to the second episode of the episodes. Thank you so much for being here and tuning in again. How are you? Like intentionally asking, are you okay? Because I'm not okay. I'm tired and writing my final qualifying exam just wasn't easy because I didn't know what to expect and it was really my first FQE and I was panicking but guys it went well by the grace of God and we're still alive we're still beautiful we're still kicking we're still here and for that I am grateful and today is basically about my struggles with my career choice the thing that I decided to study my regrets lessons learned because I feel like yes I'm in third year and I'm not in my final year yet, but like I passed my FQE, so I'm basically my final year and I'm qualified to talk about this and it's been three years of experience, so I guess my opinion is valid, but my whole general experience about self-doubt in terms of career, how healthy it is, is audiology the thing for you and that's the thing about this video it can be applied in whatever career that you're going for it's all about university experience and what we go through in terms of picking our careers challenges in university and just growth because becoming an adult is not easy I've been growing for only two years, guys. Can you believe it? I'm only 21 and I've been growing for the last two years. I think 20 and 21 have really shown me that this is actually what being a young adult is. And I've had to grow so much and I'm, I had so much growth, like emotionally, like a lot of emotional growth. And I've changed a lot in the past two years. And it's been challenging and I just want to talk to the people that have been through the same thing I've been through, people that are still yet to go through this and guys, a career, your, the career that you choose is basically a determiner of a lot of things. I am so mad that I was only, how old was I in grade 11? I was only 15, how old was I in grade 11? 16 and I had to pick up my whole career at the age of 16 and I made decisions that are the reason I'm here at 16 like I don't know if we can change this if there could be a way for me to get more orientation because life orientation <laughs> that wasn't life orientation that was literally just a subject they wanted to add on your transcript but like, I think I needed more training, more growth to see other people growing because also I am not the first child. I'm actually lost, but my siblings are way older than me and I never actually got the experience of having a big sister. Shout out to my big sister. She's, I love her, but she didn't grow up in front of my eyes. I was born and she was already grown so I didn't get to have a big sister and I feel like I've been a big sister to my nieces and nephews and I feel like if I was given a chance to have a big sister there's so many things that I could have learned but this video is for people like me who never had people to talk to them about their careers yes we had elo and they talked us they talked to us about university we went to university tours but it was just never in depth like that you know so going back into grade 11 so you're choosing your subject maths and grade 11 that's where maths that's where maths will show you real life in grade 11 physics if you don't drop maths and physics in grade 11 you're a warrior so you're left to like determine your whole life from grade 11 because let's be honest i wish i knew this maths and physics as much as they tell us that they're important they downplay how important they are those things those two subjects will determine your whole life basically and if you decide no let me drop out people are doing people are getting 90s in maths lit child i don't know what to tell you if you decide my friends are getting 90s in maths lit what's the point of me getting a 40 and staying in maths core i'm telling you stay like i'm not even joking about this just stay just test the waters and this is really bad then 
if your academic advisors or your school teachers actually advise you to leave then but yeah you're left to decide your whole life in grade 11 you apply my results were very bad in grade 11 when i tell you these 40s in maths i'm not even joking like <laughs> my results are very bad in grade 11 so when i applied uct I, co- I got conditional acceptance so i knew though that i wasn't gonna get in because my results were really bad and then came bts they were really not that bad but I would have loved to get another chance to do them again. We were the first year of NBTs. So that meant that there were no past papers. And if you know me, you know I study through past papers. I love past papers because what do you mean I just need to study and you're not going to ask me questions. But we didn't have that for NBTs. And UCT, I think that's also wanted NBTs. Studies, I'm not sure. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Guys, the fact that it was a long time ago, I'm just like so grown. And then came the end of grade 12. Results came. I wasn't proud of my results. Everyone was hyping me up, but I wasn't really proud because I knew I wasn't going to get into UCT. I got into UCT for my second choice. I got into VITS as well. And I don't even remember child, but I knew that whatever I got into uni for, it wasn't the things that I wanted. And during that December holidays, like it was peak COVID, a lot had happened at home. Like we lost loved ones. And that January was very blurry. Like it was a lot going on. And for me to stand up, my 17-year-old self to stand up and say, I'm actually going to take this gap here was a lot. And I saw my friends go to uni. My best friend was also going to uni. I cried. But my sister was like, you know what? It's fine. Take a gap here and find yourself and find exactly what you love. And I did just that. And guess what? I still don't know what I love. Like... I'm not laughing. I'm actually screaming. I'm not laughing, guys, because that's what this whole video is about. Like, the scariest thing is not knowing what your passion is. Guys, it's so scary because these people that survive staying in certain subjects, these people that go straight to uni, people who don't have to take gap years, people who, who've always known, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be this like i i was so like i envied those people i still envy them till this day because how do you know what you want and how are you so sure about what you want like it just puzzles me because how did you get there i looked at them that whole year during my gap year and i was like i wish i was that but like the amount of growth that i had during my gap year especially growth towards god healing i healed so much during my gap year from the trauma of my my high school relationship to the people that had passed and i healed from trauma from my dad's passing and i didn't even know like i was just that sad about him passing but during my gap year i felt it my boy i felt it like i was crying every night of that year I'm telling you every night, every time I look back at my journals, I'm just like, gap year was hell, but I'm so glad that I did it. So this is advice to anyone who is just coming out of matric now and took their gap year. Someone who thinks they're going to take a gap year. It's fine. Sometimes our grade 11 results are not enough to sustain us for us to get into the programs that we want. Sometimes we're going through stuff. Sometimes you get into uni and you don't have the financial means to be at uni because I know the same thing happened to me with an international university that I wanted to go to. I was so happy I got in for like the best course that I really wanted to do. And I think I still haven't healed from that. I didn't have the financial means to be at that school. I'm grateful for my parents for paying for application because you know that UCAS, UCAS is expensive and all these in universities, they charge with dollars. And it's so crazy because I still have a visa to that country even now. I should actually use my visa to go to that country. But anyways, I did my visa and stuff, but then at the end of the day, I didn't have funding. 
had to take a gap year. It was sad, but like it had to happen because of the factors that I just mentioned. So it wasn't really a train smash because look at me now. I'm sitting here and I'm at the best university in Africa and I'm doing a course that I think I like and that's going to take me somewhere one day and I'm happy. It just like is a testimony and I wish I could tell my 17 year old self that it is fine it is okay you're doing great nobody is yes people may might be running faster than you but like you're not behind on anything because this is your life you write your own story girl you're gonna be just fine so take a gap year if it means take a gap year rest get another get a job or something and if you don't that's fine grow yourself upgrade your marks it's okay to take a gap year it's really fine i think one of the things that made my gap year even easier i got i got my acceptance for uct um around may so then i knew where i was going i got acceptance to stellies i really wanted to go to stellies like i loved stellies and all these other unis that i wanted to go to but like UCT was the first one that I got. I'm telling you the next day, I was at the South African High Commission applying for a visa to study at UCT. And I don't know how, because I wasn't even set on studying audiology at all. I really didn't know what it was. I didn't know all the details. But the next day, I was applying for a visa at the South African High Commission. And I got my visa and i got raised and i was so sure with Sivele, i'm going to cape town i started binging uct videos i started binging everything to do with cape town and i was like yes i am so going to cape town i didn't have funding but i was so determined child i only got funding a week before i came to cape town but my ticket was already booked. Shout out to my sister though, because my sister just helped me be more resilient during that time. And it was just like, we don't know who's gonna pay 200,000 a year, but I only got funding Friday. And then Monday I was flying to Cape Town for a week. God was good. Like I grew so much in terms of like spiritual growth and I prayed so much and I manifested this so much that when God answered my prayers, I couldn't believe it. Like it took me months to even believe that I was actually where I was. That just goes to show that like life doesn't, is not determined by the timeline timelines that we put on life so maybe stop micromanaging that and start dreaming and start praying towards your dream because sometimes the things that we plan never go as planned maybe you're not gonna go to uni overseas maybe you're not gonna go to uct maybe you're not like the plans that you have can be so different to the plans that god has for you so receive them and be accepting and welcoming to receive changes to plans that you basically have no control over because at the end of the day god is the finisher of everything so let's get into audiology what is audiology why did i choose it i don't know that's the plain honest answer i don't know i saw it on the perspectives i saw something that was in health sciences something i qualified for and i applied for it literally once i hit google the first video that I saw was a baby getting a cochlear implant and they turned it on and then the mommy's like baby like calling the baby's name and the baby's eyes literally went so bright and they heard their mom's voice for the first time and I bawled. I cried my boy and I was like I'm doing audiology. This is what I want to do one day. This is what i want to give to patients i want to give to mummies and babies one day like i want to do that and looking back right now i just feel the sense of reward because you are going to get that reward from being able to help someone to that extent like we underestimate the importance of hearing you can be blind blind will disconnect you i'm not saying this is better than the other don't get me wrong you can be blind but blindness will disconnect you from 
visual things but hearing will disconnect you from other people your communication is compromised like you see people they are there but you're not connecting with them because you can't hear them or you can't communicate with them <laughs> Let us not underestimate the importance of hearing. It affects real people, especially children, man. I just feel so bad, especially with children, because they don't get the chance to develop language and communication. All the pragmatic skills that we have, that we take for granted, that we don't even recognize as important, they don't have the chance to have that because they can't hear and nobody knows they can't hear because they can't even say that they can't hear like anyways that's just like how concerned i am with public health when it comes to hearing because of the growth i've had in this profession and honestly in first year i didn't know what i was doing what this degree entailed i feel like i didn't have the support that i needed to know a lot about this degree and it was you're in the deep end learn as you go and i learn as i go with every clinic and in terms of profession i personally didn't google the highest paying jobs because it's definitely not the highest paying job like you're not gonna get rich from audiology like only a certain percentage of people who are more business minded people are more business minded are most likely to like make it in the field I personally don't believe I'm that. I won't even lie to you. I want to be employed. I want to have a secure job. I want to walk into the office at 8 a.m. and leave at 5. And I don't have a problem about making money, insurance, billing. That's not me. It's someone else's dream though, but not me. I want to be employed. So there are people who make bag. And it's like the fastest growing industry as well and it's one of the healthiest jobs in the world well in the united states mostly it's, it's top five healthiest jobs like suicide rates are not like doctors who kill themselves like every other day <laughs> but it's 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 a healthy environment on paper it's a great industry but you're not gonna make back sorry to break it to you it's south africa maybe abroad you are and I wish I also knew the requirements into going abroad. I might as well just tell you guys because I wish somebody else had told me. I, you need masters for most countries, but some countries you really don't. In America, you need to get your AUD, which means you need to be a doctor to practice. And there's so many options. There's so many learning options. There's so many things you can do. Let me just like go into the... There's so many fields that you can go into within audiology and I learned that through the blocks. So in med school, you have blocks and each block is a part of your profession. For instance, you're going to have a pediatric block, you're going to have an adult block, you're going to have diagnostic, rehabilitation, balance or vestibular management, you're going to have CAPD these are all audiology blocks by the way neonatal hearing screening school community public health all these are different blocks and i feel like choosing what you do after your undergrad then you can choose from whatever block that resonated with you and for me i had never found that block everything was hell guys i didn't like it there and to be honest like i did like it in theory but when it came to actual clinical practice i really didn't until now i think i have found the love of my life i think i have found something i resonate with something i'm passionate about something that i have seen other people practice and i'm like i want to do that i truly truly love vestibular management i love balance because audiologists deal with hearing and balance if you did life sciences you know what i'm talking about i'm still here to do the clinic block for it next year which is why i'm saying i'm not sure because in theory i would like the theory part of something and then i go to the clinic settings i'm like i'm not doing this for the rest of my life and so far i haven't found the thing that i'm doing for the rest of my life 
but with vestibular vestibular management i love my lecturer and i guess she loves me she's kind to everyone she's also my research supervisor i love her so much and i feel like i found something i really like and which is weird because the worst thing the block that i really thought i would hate which was oral rehab which is something most speech therapists do where they teach communication skills to adults and children that was my favorite block this year um where we were at a deaf school and we were teaching children communication skills listening skills and i loved that child so much i loved my patients so much i loved my ce and it was a great experience so i feel like what you like is really shaped by your experience at my school i really felt like i didn't get the support that i needed to be passionate about what i was learning so i feel like it also depends on who's your mentor who's mentoring you who are the people you're looking up to some people are just not passionate about the career yet they are still in it which drains everybody else because then everyone goes into the career with so much pessimism is that the word and they don't get to enjoy it because there's a ce who's screaming at you that's just my experience my first block in second year at clinic i got screamed at in front of patients literally the ce literally like was screaming at me and i stood there and i cried i cried so much you know when you cry and you can't breathe anymore i was literally like crying and i couldn't breathe and the patients were just watching like shame poor child and the ce was going off at me and i was like i'm dropping out you have those people who are gonna be bullies in every profession and you can't let them get in your way to get what you want out of your dreams and you need to remember why you're doing it think of that child i thought of that child with the cochlear implants and i was like this is who i'm doing it for i'm not doing it for the ce i'm never gonna see this lady again maybe she's gonna be a colleague one day but she's not gonna determine my whole life based off how angry she is is she mad at her husband something happened at home that is not going to determine the trajectory of my whole life because i just experienced that and honestly the clinic setting can get like that and you just need to build a very thick skin and i feel like i still haven't gotten that thick skin but i'm getting there in the sense that i don't always want to quit right after something happens i would rather fight i'm a fighter i'm a fighter i know what i deserve and i will demand what i deserve and i thank the university space for making me the person that is like that right now so with clinics it own it depends on the people that you allow to mentor you the people that you look up to those people are going to encourage you as you go along the way so much they're going to help you grow so much they're going to help you with so many opportunities just like align yourself with the people that resonate with your dream that's what i'm saying so watch those youtube videos of people that are doing something that you're doing your lecturer that you love connect with them on linkedin talk to them about the career your career options and the many things that you can do with your career those people the people that know about the profession people who know about audiology i don't know people who wore hearing aids since they were a kid they know exactly what's going on so be besties with those people like suck in their energy like grab their energy with both hands and let that energy carry you through because if you go into a profession with negativity you're not going to get as a lot out of it yes they're going to tell you with allied health you're not going to get paid one of the useless degrees get away from people like that block them i always block them on on tiktok people who tell other people don't do this degree it's useless i will no don't listen to those people try your best to stay away from negative aura and negative opinions because you're not going to perform your best in whatever you're doing and i wish someone told me this in first and second year but create that positive energy 
for yourself because at, at the end of the day you are in that degree might as well do the most while you're in it you know and speaking about doing the most while you're in your degree i struggled with my marks i didn't struggle with my marks i just didn't get distinctions because in health sciences the distinction is what 75 and i was always there like this close for the past three years of in this close and it was so discouraging because i want to be on the dean's list the book and it was like from matric i'm just like my goodness what are these marks that i'm getting like what do you mean i'm getting a 50 like what do you mean i'm failing because statistics i felt statistics i cried so much that day i cried so much and i wanted to quit but i didn't and at the end of the day for that course i ended up getting a distinction <laughs> guys like don't be discouraged by failure and marks and all of that and instead of being discouraged by those marks and not getting what i needed to get to like shine in my degree not shine necessarily but like you need to build a portfolio man you're not just in university to get a degree then leave you need to build a career for yourself in that degree so even if you want to change to a different degree the next year or transfer you need to have something outside of just your marks so i said my marks are not that good so let's tap into other things as well because my best friend gave me this idea that you need to supplement yourself with your skills i have good leadership skills i believe i have good leadership skills i yap a lot and as i said i will fight for what i want so i was the class rep and i've been a fighter since first year like i've been a fighter since first year second year i was a mentor and luckily i also got to be a mentor rep as well and third year i ran for student council it was way out of my comfort zone because then now i have to beg people to vote for me i need to show people that i need them and that's not me i don't even beg people to subscribe to my channel i don't even promote my channel because i feel like people should use their free will people should subscribe if they want to people should vote if they want to i feel weird telling people please subscribe guys like it feels invasive to me i've never been comfortable with that but i had to step out of my comfort zone in third year go for it because i knew there was nothing else i could do like in my faculty that could further like grow me as a student as an academic so i went for student council and that week was draining i had so much anxiety i had so much social anxiety i was scared and i had the third highest votes and i was like what were you so scared of like look at you and it's been an experience i've only been in office for a week now it's been an experience and i'm so happy that the portfolio that i'm going into is one of the careers that i also want to go into i'm very passionate about social media marketing just a bit and i, I want to explore that i want to explore my different talents as well I'm also in Societies, Shoko, the deputy head of audiology. And that was also a lot because the interviews were a lot. But yay, we did that. I'm also in UNICEF, UCT. I'm also doing communications and marketing there. My LinkedIn is it. Check me out. I'll follow you back. We'll connect. We'll be besties. And I'm using my skills to supplement for my shortcomings in terms of my marks and just my marks are not even bad dog but like i just love being a high achiever and i've had to apply myself i've had to challenge myself it's been an experience and i'm sure next year has even more to offer and i'm so excited for it like i'm so excited i can't even lie and honestly that's also gonna help me experience different aspects of my life that are just outside of just focus straight up audiology and experiencing other aspects of the industry where i can also apply audiology because everything is correlated like with audiology you can go into insurance you can do an mba and go into policy you can do all these things that they don't tell you about 
at first they just tell you you're gonna diagnose hearing like guys i me after my i i graduate i don't want to see an audiometer i don't like pressing buttons and say raise your hand when you hear the beep i don't like that i don't want to see an audiometer and i hate it there hearing aids i don't like it either i don't like that so i want to experience different things that i can do with my degree and being on linkedin i see so many people that have done so much with the degree and it's so inspiring to see and these also campus lectures those public lectures attend them because you get to see so many people that experience health sciences in different ways like i just attended a lecture with one of unicef's i don't know what he is but he's a chairperson of something at the united nations and it was so inspiring that you can go into policy making and you can you don't have to and he was a dentist at first and now he's into policy making and it's like how did you get there nobody's gonna tell us about these things until you go out there you do the research and you find out for yourself you know so there's so many things you can do with your health health sciences degree don't be discouraged by people who think that the only way to make money in health sciences is to be a doctor no you don't have to be a doctor for everything not everyone's gonna be a doctor that's okay maybe diet trying there's people that i know that have gotten into medicine like beyond their 30s days my tutor did audiology first and now she's doing medicine there's there's so many opportunities and I'm, I'm just saying that you're not behind time my darling you're doing just fine you're doing fine so as i draw to the end of this video and i feel so good with the amount of reflection that i have had I feel like I'm growing myself by just speaking to you. There's so many things I should be proud of. And just like sitting here and reflecting on these things is also growing me as a person as well. I also ask myself, what's next for me? Next year's my final year. And there's so many fears related to that because I don't know what's next for me. Because as you may know, I'm an international student and I will need international students to listen. Do not skip this part. This is the most important part. As an international student in South Africa, you cannot register for the HPCSA. Why? Because you need to do your community service. Who does community service? South Africans. And then they will give priority to foreigners. Firstly, asylum seekers or the people who had to migrate their countries because of wars and stuff they're gonna give those foreigners first and then the rest of us are at the bottom of the barrel so chances for you to do community service in south africa are like teeny tiny yeah so your opportunities have to be within the research space within academia they have to be within traveling overseas and looking for jobs overseas because Opportunities in South Africa are very limited because we know the resources and the issues we have with the government and jobs and salaries. There's limited resources, Shame. We don't blame the country and everything's limited. It's either you go home or do your master's in health sciences. I know some doctors do get unpaid internships so you need to find it yourself and if you have the money to wake up and go to work for no money girl do it but as an international student opportunities in terms of healthcare in south africa so i wish i knew that i didn't know that i didn't know that too i wish i knew that so what's next for me i obviously want to continue with my academic career i don't want to end at an undergrad I feel like there's so many opportunities for me to continue but who knows issues like funding where exactly i'm gonna go because as i told you i personally don't want to be sitting in front of an audiometer for the rest of my life i'm good with that that's not me and there's so many things that i'm still yet to explore i don't know what my passion is yet i'm still yet to find it but i am at peace with that like i am so happy i'm so content that i'll just see life as it comes like i'm so young there's so many opportunities to study more there's so many opportunities to even start over and like do a different whole different degree like 
it's okay and i'm okay with that i'm 21 and i'm learning myself i'm learning what i'm what i like there's so many life-changing experiences that i'm still here to experience and maybe those things will eventually grow my passion for something but i know that i love leadership i love helping people i love advocating for people i love advocating for people like i I care so much and it kills me because like we have this healthcare system and it's not doing enough for the people that we want to help and it's so discouraging because like you have these people that really need your help and you have the knowledge but there's no resources for you to like split yourself into five thousands of you and solve every problem that's just how it is but i love helping people i'm passionate about that i'm also passionate about social media so It's okay that I am still here to explore and find my passion. I'm fine with that. I'm content. I'm at peace. And with everything that I'm doing in my life right now, I think I'm doing great for myself. And I wish the same for you. I wish the same for you and your loved ones. And I want you to find contentment in whatever season of your life you're in right now. Be content in whatever season that you're in, knowing that the Lord has plans for you and his plans for you are to make you prosper they never to to harm you and knowing that if you wait on him he will renew your strength and you will fly high like an eagle in whatever industry you want to go in you will fly high reflect on those words claim those words meditate on those words and know that one day you will fly high in whatever industry that you're in and for the people that are flying high in their industries shout out to you we want to be like you but know that your season is coming and when it comes you need to be prepared for it timing is only just like a factor that will help you grow that when the season comes you are ready to receive it and thrive in it so this is me signing out Hoping that I will see you again soon. I love you so much for being here and listening up until this point of the video. Share it, like, subscribe. I did say I don't like forcing people to subscribe. But this is a gun to your head to subscribe and share with your friends, okay? And good luck with everything that you pursue in your life. And matrix, good luck. And if you have anything you want to ask me, please don't be afraid to touch me, DM me anywhere. My details are in the description. I'll give you all the support and resources that you may need. And good luck, okay? Good luck with your exams. You're doing great stuff.